Welcome to the reading of the Sabbath School lesson for the second quarter of 2022. Welcome to Lesson 13 from the series on Genesis. It's titled Israel in Egypt, ready for teaching on June 25, and I'm Percy Harold. Thursday, June 23, The Hope of the Promised Land. Read Genesis chapter 49, verse 29, through to chapter 50, verse 21. What great themes of hope are found in the conclusion of the book of Genesis? Genesis 49, beginning at verse 29. Then he charged them and said to them, I am to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of Ephron the Hittite as a possession for a burial place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah his wife. And there I buried Leah. The field and the cave that is there were purchased from the sons of Heth. And when Jacob had finished commanding his sons, he drew his feet up into the bed and breathed his last and was gathered to his people. Then Joseph fell on his father's face and wept over him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. Forty days were required for him, for such are the days required for those who are embalmed. And the Egyptian mourned for him seventy days. Now, when the days of his mourning were past, Joseph spoke to the household of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found favour in your eyes, please speak in the hearing of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, saying, Behold, I am dying. In my grave, which I dug for myself in the land of Canaan, there you shall bury me. Now, therefore, please let me go up and bury my father, and I will come back. And Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father, as he made you swear. So Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, as well as all the house of Joseph, his brothers, and his father's house. Only their little ones, their flocks, and their herds they left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great gathering." Then they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond the Jordan, and they mourned there with a great and very solemn lamentation. He observed seven days of mourning for his father, and when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning at the threshing floor at Atad, they said, This is a deep mourning of the Egyptians. Therefore its name was called Abel Mizraim, which is beyond the Jordan. So his sons did for him just as he had commanded them. For his sons carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, before Mamre, which Abraham bought with the field from Ephron the Hittite as property for a burial place. And after he had buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt, he and his brothers, and all who went up with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, Perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. So they sent messengers to Joseph, saying, Before your father died, he commanded, saying, Thus you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now please forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also went down and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about, as it is this day, to save many people alive. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them, and spoke kindly to them. The conclusion of Genesis is made up of three events that are filled with hope. 
First, there is the hope that Israel will return to the promised land. Moses, the author of Genesis, describes Jacob's and Joseph's deaths and burials as events pointing to the promised land. Immediately after his blessing and prophecy on the twelve tribes of Israel, in chapter 49, verse 28, Jacob thinks of his death and charges his sons to bury him in Canaan, at the cave of Machpelah, where Sarah was buried, as we've just read in verses 29 to 31 of chapter 49. The narrative describing the funeral procession toward Canaan becomes a precursor to the exodus from Egypt several centuries later. Second, there is the hope that God will turn evil into good. After Jacob's death and burial, Joseph's brothers are worried about their future. They are afraid that Joseph will now take his revenge. They come to Joseph and prostrate themselves before him, ready to become his servants, as we read in chapter 50, verse 18, a scenario that is reminiscent of Joseph's prophetic dreams. Joseph reassures them and tells them to not be afraid, in verse 19, a phrase that refers to the future, as we read in Genesis 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Because what was meant evil against him God meant for good, we read in verse 20 of chapter 50, and turned the course of events towards salvation, as we read in verses 19 to 21. And we'll compare that with Genesis 45, verses 5 and 7 to 11. But now, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life, and verse 7, and God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not tarry. That is, even despite so many human failures, God's providence will overrule. Third, there is the hope that God will save fallen humankind. The story of Joseph's death in this last verse of Genesis is broader than just about his death. Strangely, Joseph does not command to have his bones buried. Instead, he points to the time when, in verse 25, God will surely visit you and you shall carry up my bones from here, which they did many years later, in direct obedience to those words, as we read in Genesis 13:19, And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had placed the children of Israel under solemn oath, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here with you. Ultimately, the hope of the promised land, Canaan, is a symbol, a precursor to the ultimate hope of salvation, of restoration, of a new Jerusalem in a new heaven and a new earth. The ultimate hope for all of us, a hope made certain by the death of Shiloh. And so to finish today, read Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 4. How do these verses represent the grandest hope that we have? Without this promise, what hope do we have other than death alone as the end of all our problems? Revelation 21 beginning at verse 1. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying, 
there shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind, and It Is Written. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. Remember, God is always faithful.